Julian Assange doesn't have to be out and about to communicate. From his hiding place in Britain today, he answered questions on a newspaper website. Threats against us are a matter of public record, replied Assange, and implied the U.S. government was behind this. The dead end people found last night when they tried to log on to WikiLeaks. U.S.-based Dynamic Network Services, which provided WikiLeaks' internet address, had cancelled its service. The company said it simply couldn't keep doing business with a website under constant cyber assault. For the past few days, WikiLeaks has come under what's called a distributed denial-of-service attack. And it works like this. The attacker searches out computers that are online and unsecured, and undetected takes them over. Then each one recruits hundreds or even thousands of others. In hackerspeak, it's called a zombie army. And together, all these hijacked computers bombard the targeted website, in this case WikiLeaks, with data until overwhelmed, it collapses. And because the attack comes from so many different addresses, it can't be blocked. But WikiLeaks rebounded fast. Hours after the site disappeared, it popped back up again with new addresses in Europe. Staff are working hard to maintain it now on servers kept safe in this underground bunker in Sweden. Offline, Julian Assange is still wanted for questioning in a Swedish sexual assault case. A fresh warrant's now been filed, but it won't be enforceable for at least another five days. If the police think it's valid, they'll send it over to me. I'll have a look at it. And if I think it's valid, then we'll operate on it. If, if I think it's not, we'll go to court and we'll challenge it. Julian Assange will no doubt use every minute in the meantime to keep secret documents flowing to the WikiLeaks website. Elizabeth Palmer, CBS News, London.